All right, this is part two of Anne and Mike Talk Broadband. Now at a full screen, look at that. Isn't that cool? Okay, Anne, kick us off. Well, this is part two, as Mike said. Um, Anne Tracy and Mike O'Connor talking broadband, um, thinking specifically about the, broad, the newly named Broadband Task Force um, as an audience. I, if you haven't seen the earlier recording, you should take a look. Um, Mike's got some great advice, and he comes at it having been on the original task force and being an integral member of that task force. So I think uh, he's got some great advice, and he's been in your shoes, and I think it makes sense to listen to what he's got to say. Okay, then. This is the second half of two. There were two other things that I really wanted to talk about a lot. I wanted to talk about essentially the reliability of the infrastructure in the state. And we're using the same exact model that we used for Ubiquity, but there's a whole different pile of recommendations. And in fact, there's probably the need for you, the task force, to form a subcommittee of smart geeks to help you get this stuff done. Because this is the heavy geek stuff that uh, we're going to talk about now. So what we thought about in uh, the reliability part of our work was this list of goals. Uh, that if we had a secure and reliable internet broadband infrastructure that a bunch of good things would happen and there's a list on your screen by the way uh, Ann and I are going to make this slide deck available so you don't have to take notes because this is going to go real fast just like the first one did we also came up with a whole list of fairly detailed things about redundancy and single points of failure and peering and all that kind of stuff and see I told you you got to get some geeks involved in this because this is the stuff that uh, you really need smart people that are pretty technical to help you with it. So I'd strongly encourage you to form a subcommittee of those folks. Be happy to suggest some names to you. So again, here we go into the leadership thing. It's the same stuff. We're still organizing people. We're still trying to empower and manage the direction and so on. But now we've even got cool quotes from uh, people and and the highlight there is the need for this broad alliance and again this is back to your role as a committee is not to do all this stuff but to get those who can communicating to each other and helping each other and getting out of their silos um, all right so on to the mobilized thing. What are we talking about? Well, it's again, you know, best practices, organizations that might be able to coordinate a lot of this stuff, experts, and so on. One of the things that my friend Norm Coleman told me when he was mayor in St. Paul is, Mikey, I can't get a lot done, but one thing I can do is call meetings. And when I call a meeting, people come. And I think that you're in the same boat as a task force you can't do a lot. You all have day jobs, but you can call meetings and we'll show up. Uh, empowerment. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on out in the world that uh, needs to be coordinated. And there's also a lot of stuff that people can do if they're empowered to do it. Uh, and so there was a little list of things to do. And again, here's our old friend, Mr. Manage. Uh, and, and the highlight here is a lot of this stuff would happen better, faster, if we were coordinated. Right now we're not terribly coordinated in the state, and I think we're missing a lot of opportunities. So, again, a little list of uh, recommendations for you. Back to stimulus stuff. And uh, I think one of the things that we in the, the uh, reliability subgroup wanted to highlight was the notion that this is a readiness issue, that we're not as prepared as we should be as a state for this stuff, and we should do more to get ready. So again, uh, think about that. And in uh, finally, in the coordinate area, a bunch of things. There are a bunch of uh, organizations that are already doing this sort of stuff, and we should encourage them to be aware of each other and to work together. 
Uh, let's see, what's going on? My slides are a little out of voice. I don't know. Anyway, we'll just drill you through the slides here real quick. Uh, I think I'm missing a slide. And uh, so finally the incentivizing stuff. Yeah, I'm missing a I'm missing a slide. So on to oversight. Again, tons of stuff to keep an eye on. You are in a perfect position to uh, keep an eye on how we're doing on this kind of stuff, shine a bright light on it where it's good and where it's bad. And uh, right now, quite frankly, folks, we're not in the first tier, n neither in terms of ubiquity, which was the first one of these, nor in terms of this reliability stuff. We're sort of a station on the line. We're not right at the, we're not a big junction on the information railroad right now. And I think that if we're going to get anywhere near close to making those goals, we're going to have to shine more light on that. So that means more stuff to track, again, more mapping. That also means more evaluating. Uh, you all are in the position to make some choices, and I think that's a good idea. And finally, uh, highlight some of the good things that are going on, and I'll give you an example. There is a complete grassroots cooperative exchange that's popped up, and you can see the graph of the traffic that's going on. One of the recommendations that went by in those slides is the notion that Minnesota bits and packets ought to stay in Minnesota. They shouldn't drive down to Chicago and then come all the way back just because the carrier or provider that you're using has their network configured that way. We should, we should have an exchange point here in Minnesota. A bunch of really good geeks went ahead and built one and you can see that already it's got a lot of traffic. Akamai is in there. A bunch of the major internet providers that are in there. They'd love to have some more uh, people, and so there's somebody that you could go talk to about a big success, and it costs no money. There's no money in this. This is all donated effort by a bunch of ISPs. And the, the second to last thing, I, I want to run you through a bunch of uh, ideas about financing. Um, I didn't think our section of the report was real strong here, and so I want to give you some ideas about where to go to look for money. Clearly, there's no money in the state budget, but there's a lot of money in other places. And so I'm just going to click through a bunch of slides that are in the report that talk about other places that you could go look for money. And again, what's needed is a group of people to get really creative, to sit down and try and figure out how to put all this money together in a way that really gets the job done, instead of having everybody in their silo uh, doing their own separate thing, not collaborating, not cooperating. I think that's the big theme of this whole spiel from Mikey, is if you can, if you can encourage collaboration between all of these folks, um, we'll move the ball forward. If you can't, then we'll probably just organize around you because we can't wait any longer. It's been two years. Uh, time's a wasting. And the final point that I want to make is, just like Ann and I today, use that internet thing. Uh, one of the most frustrating things that happened on the first task force was the, the inability of the task force to use to do anything except live face-to-face -face meetings. And so uh, Ann and I and others have created a hashtag that's right in the middle of the screen, N MN for Minnesota, BB for broadband, TF for task force. If you start tweeting on that channel, a lot of us are listening. A lot of us will chime in. A lot of us will offer our ideas. But don't forget all the other stuff that's happened in the last few years. Email lists, YouTube, like we're doing today, Facebook, podcasts, you name it. And, and the final punchline before I throw it back to Ann is there is no try. Just do. It's time to do. Do, do, do. <laughs> back to you, Ann. You know, I think I, I, I'm just going to emphasize what you've said. As I, I think one powerful tool is just to empower the geeks. You know, the geeks understand 
that a network is only as valuable as its weakest link. You know, that leads to ubiquity, that leads to, leads to the reliability, and they know how to network offline and online. They're used to working together because if, if all of their stuff doesn't work, then it's not going to work as part of the network either. And, and empowering them is having somebody take a look at some of the finances, is measuring what's working and what's not working because I think that what geeks love more than pizza is a problem. You know, let them know what's not working and get them working on it. I think that that's a great way to do it. And I think the coordination that you've talked about, I think that if Minnesota can get coordinated, if we can uh, all be putting our oars in the water at the same direction, as you've said, we could become a leader in the world, uh, in the in the field of broadband. I, 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 the opportunity is there because a lot of folks are lacking coordination. So if we can do that, and follow some of the other advice that you had, I think that there really is an opportunity to make a difference here. Great words to end on, and since we're out of our 10-minute time, that's what we're going to do. See you later, gang. Have a Thank great you. time.